the mercury, and lo and behold, what they found was about half of the 20 samples that were collected of the high fructose corn syrup had detectable mercury at, at varying levels. And then the second study was one that my own group did uh, that tried to extend on, on this problem and finding and go out to supermarkets and actually look for common brand name food and beverage products and test them for total mercury as well. And we found that about one in three of the 55 products that we sampled had detectable uh, mercury in them. How does it happen? How does the mercury contaminate the corn syrup? Well, uh, how it happens is like this. Uh, these huge chlorine plants, uh, many of them continue to use a really outdated technology that's based on mercury cells. Uh, it's not the only technology they could use. It's only one of three, but many still use it, despite the fact that we've known for a long time that they are big polluters of mercury into the environment. What was kind of an open secret in the industry, though, was that the food grade chemicals that came out of these plants could also be contaminated with mercury. And so uh, what these new studies shed the light on is the possibility that we're getting uh, significant exposure to mercury through these contaminated food chemicals. What is the FDA doing about this? Well, unfortunately, you know, like the uh, uh, previous uh, speaker said, the, the FDA problems kind of speak for themselves. They, their, their response this week was basically we're, we're dealing with salmonella. We don't have time to worry about high fructose corn syrup. I think it reflects a bigger problem, though, in, in that not only is the FDA kind of asleep at the switch, but, but they've probably been underinvested. Uh, in other words, society has just decided that public health investments to protect the food supply uh, or to look for salmonella are not a good investment, and so we're suffering the consequences now, I think, from, from that lack of oversight and uh, investment. And the use of high fructose corn syrup, I mean, a lot of people might say, what are you talking about? Sugar, right? Well, high fructose corn syrup is a sweetener, just like sugar or honey or molasses are sweeteners. And the, the, what's different is that high fructose corn syrup's really only been widely used uh, in the U.S. food industry since maybe the mid-70s and only used in uh, soda pop uh, since the early 80s. But it's rapidly become the major sweetener to the point where now uh, one in 10 calories that the average American eats comes from high fructose corn syrup. And that's the USDA's own figures. And the politics of corn and how it's come to replace sugar? Well, I think it's politics and economics. Uh, as everyone knows or should know by now, as a country, we produce a heck of a lot of corn. And that in and of itself isn't a bad thing, but, but some of our policies have made corn extremely inexpensive for people to make all sorts of things out of it, including sweeteners, uh, but as well uh, fuels and other things. So um, high fructose corn syrup as a sweetener has been a pretty cheap staple for the food industry, and they found they've been very imaginative in finding lots of different food products to put it in. Uh, you know, everything from fast foods, where it's pretty ubiquitous, to salad dressings, to barbecue sauce, uh, as well as soda pop, of course. Uh, has the embargo against Cuba helped with keeping the corn syrup prices low and sugar prices high? I assume that the high fructose corn syrup lobby uh, has been uh, a great supporter of the embargo. Uh, well, you're getting a little far afield from, <laughs> from what I'm looking at in these studies. So well, I don't know about that. But I think, I think the issue here isn't just about high fructose corn syrup. But, you know, the bigger point to the story, I think, is that we have a, an alternative way of making these products. The caustic soda, for example, is integral to the production of high fructose corn syrup. You can make caustic soda using mercury, or you can make it without using mercury. Unfortunately, we still have plants in the U.S. and even more abroad that continue to use this outdated mercury technology that can contaminate the caustic soda with mercury. And, and that's what, in turn, we think uh, may be contaminating the high fructose corn syrup. So uh, 
then Senator uh, Obama actually was a co-sponsor of Senate legislation in 2007 that would have phased out the use of mercury in making uh, caustic soda in these plants, but the, the legislation never passed. Uh, the Court of Miners a... Association has rejected the mercury study. Um, Audrey Erickson of the Corner Finers Association said in a statement, quote, this study appears to be based on outdated information of dubious significance. Our industry has used mercury-free versions of the two reagents mentioned in the study, hydrochloric acid and caustic soda, for several years. It's important Americans are provided accurate science-based information. They should know that high fructose corn syrup is safe. In 1983, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration formally listed high fructose corn syrup as safe for use in food and reaffirmed that decision in 1996. Yeah, well, I think there's two important points uh, from that statement. The first is the data that came out this week is the only public data available. So neither the FDA nor the Corn Refiners Association has come forward with any data. The scientific study uh, collected high fructose corn syrup samples uh, in, from in 2005 and tested them. So that's the only data we have to go on. Uh, our uh, report dealt with supermarket foods that were collected this fall in the Twin Cities. Uh, so that's pretty up to date, I think. Um, let the, me the let me get let me let me play for you the Corner Finers yep. Association ad. They launched a marketing um, campaign to defend high fructose corn syrup. The lobbying group ran several television ads promoting the sweetener to be a natural product, just like regular sugar. Once again, you're demonstrating your inferior intellect. <laughs> That's real as high fructose corn syrup, eh? So? So even a doofus like you must have heard what they say about it. <laughs> what? Well, then, I mean, you know, I mean, that it's made from corn, and it's nutritionally the same as sugar, and it's just fine in moderation? Did mom and dad teach you any manners? <laughs> Get the facts. You're in for a sweet surprise. Your response, Dr. David Wallinga. Well, you know, I don't think our research says something either way about the healthfulness of high fructose corn syrup per se. I think what it points to is that there's different ways to make it. Uh, and we think we ought to be making high fructose corn syrup without chemicals that can be mercury contaminated. And we have the technology to do that. Uh, I think the industry just needs a, a kind of a good solid push in that direction, and, and Senator Obama's legislation and that sponsored by others would do that. What are the dangers of mercury, especially when it comes to kids? Well, uh, mercury in general comes in a lot of different forms, and all the forms are basically toxic to varying degrees. We know the most about a particular form called methylmercury, and people will recognize that because it's the one in fish and seafood. And all the federal standards uh, are based on methylmercury. We don't really know what kind of mercury is in high fructose corn syrup. I would hope that if FDA does further testing, and I hope they do, that that's one of the questions they would answer is, what's the mixture of mercury in uh, the high fructose corn syrup that we're finding? Um, but, but even beyond that, you know, because you could spend years having debates over that, I think is this point that there are different ways to make high fructose corn syrup. We could easily transition the industry to uh, only making high fructose corn syrup and other food products using chemicals that aren't mercury contaminated because of these plants that use this outdated technology. And finally, that's, that's where I think we finally need to go. back on the issue of uh, the peanuts. I want to ask pa Patty Lavera. She agrees with senior congressional and state officials like con Congress member uh, Rose DeLauro of Connecticut calling um, for a federal probe of possible criminal violations at the Georgia peanut processing plant. Yes, yeah, sadly. I mean, I think that's what it's come to. I mean, this is a plant. I mean, everything that the FDA does is basically voluntary. They ask these plants to regulate themselves, and then they act surprised when it goes badly. But this plant did some testing, saw Five a seconds. problem, and just did more testing until it came up okay. And that, that should be investigated, and they should have some penalty for Patty that. Patty Lavera, Food and Water Watch, and David Wallinga of Institute for Agriculture and Trade Policy, thanks so much for joining us. And that does it for our broadcast. of Action, I'm produced by Mike Berkshire, for the producer, Armata, Angela Comet, Steve Martinez. We have a web store manager job opening. Apply at job at democracynow.org. Check our website. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.